Alternate versions of movies and TV shows I find rather fascinating, and even though I've made it no secret that I rather strongly dislike the later voices of Peter and Janine and the real Ghostbusters, I have gone out of my way to hear some of the ABC redubs. <laughs> The ABC redubs of real Ghostbusters episodes are still rather hard to find, so where are you gonna search? eBay. Currently, the only way to get the ABC redubs of the six episodes of season one where they replaced Lorenzo Music and Laura Summer with Dave Cooley and Kath Susie is from old VHS recordings of their airings on ABC. Right I know the site Spook Central has been working to get these redubs and other alternate versions of episodes out there, so you should check them out. Oh, and of course, there was also that odd situation with the seventh redub episode, Slimer Is At You, where they swapped that episode originally meant for the syndication package with Transylvanian Homesick Blues, which I covered if you want to hear more about that. This VHS has random recordings of the real Ghostbusters from the first three seasons and nicely has three of the ABC redubs on it. As these are old home recordings, the quality is kind of all over the place, but that's kind of what you have to expect with these things. Hang on to your seat. We're having a special on weirdos today. There's more of the real Ghostbusters on its way. A real Ghostbusters next. The three redubs I got with this tape were the third episode, Mrs. Rogers' Neighborhood, the fifth episode, Troll Bridge, Ooh. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Yeah. He got me again, Ray! He slimed me in my sleep! Ooh, yuck. Ah. Ah. He got me again, Ray! He slimed me in my sleep! Hey, wake up and smell the coffee, you guys! Hey, wake up and smell the coffee, you guys! And the sixth episode, The Boogeyman Cometh. Janine, we're all going Betty by now, so don't let anyone in. Janine, we're all going Betty by now, so don't let anybody in. Whatever you say, Dr. Venkman. Whatever you say, Dr. Venkman. Now, supposedly the reason ABC redubbed these episodes was to keep things consistent after they let Q5 come in and destroy the show. However, it's funny they didn't actually redub all of season one, just six of the episodes. So yeah, that's real consistent with your worst versions of Peter and Janine. Also, it's made extra clear by the recordings on this tape, you'd still be watching the syndicated episodes at the same time with the original voices. So there was no consistency to be had in the slightest. Yo, Slimer, brought you a surprise. Slimer, you green glob of goo, come out of there. One odd thing I've never really seen discussed too was that ABC apparently also redubbed the credits music. I have no idea why ABC changed the credits track to this generic tune, but that was just something going on only with the ABC episodes at this time, as the couple of syndicated episodes have the normal Real Ghostbusters instrumental track. Tonight at 6, Alex has it his way when he celebrates his birthday at an out-of-town nightclub on Family Ties. Now stay tuned for Launchpad McQuack and all his feathered friends on DuckTales. Now if we look at the waveform of the credits music, uh, yeah, there it is, Hidden Pointy Glasses. That generic tune has Safer Kids round glasses with a bland personality. And we all know that's how ABC loved their Janines. <laughs> Of course, since this is just a redub, we still have the scary glasses, Janine, with the smother you a sweetness cast Susie voice. I'm surprised ABC didn't try and slap round glasses over her pointed ones, you know, for consistency. If they had done these edits just a few years later during that time period with all the anime editing, I bet they would have actually tried that. 
Mrs. Rogers' Neighborhood was an episode written by Len Jansen and Chuck Menville, the duo who were originally tasked with story editing the show until they realized they were expected to story edit not only the 13 episodes for the first season, but also 65 episodes for syndication as well. Which led to that rather daunting task being taken on by J. Michael Straczynski instead. Len Jansen and Chuck Menville actually picked up story editing the series post J. Michael Straczynski leaving because the network work let Q5 steal the real Ghostbusters' soul. Some of the stuff this writing duo did was a little goofier than the tone the rest of the series normally had while J. Michael Straczynski was story editing, particularly the first episode, Ghosts Are Us. Oh, yeah, how sweet it is! But I do overall enjoy their episodes in the first season, pre-Q5, where their stuff after the interference suffered, just like any of the other writers who worked on both versions of the show. And as Len Jansen stated on the commentary from the Time Life set, he didn't personally like the Q5 changes. We were pretty much hogtied in a lot of ways by broadcast standards. Well, we saw the new Janine there, and she had kind of softened glasses. I liked her the other way. It kind of gave her a little edge. She was kind of an edgy Brooklynite, and that's what made her different. I think Mrs. Rogers' Neighborhood is probably Len Jansen and Chuck Manville's best episode in the series, as it is an early episode and it does a good job highlighting the characters' personalities, and it does have some rather creepy moments. At least as far as the network episodes went, they're able to go much creepier overall on the syndicated ones. Mrs. Rogers' Neighborhood probably would have actually worked better as a pilot for the series than Ghosts Are Us. Ghosts Are Us was a bit sillier with the ghost family trying to take over the ghost busting business, and had a bit more of that wacky cartoon vibe where Mrs. Rogers' Neighborhood hits more of the tone the pre-Q5 series would have. Interestingly, on the storyboards, you can see that we were originally meant to get a more detailed supernatural formation of Mrs. Rogers' house with smoke, lightning, and the ground rising. Where in the actual episode, it just quickly fades out from an empty lot at night to Mrs. Rogers' house in the day. Which is a little less clear that it's just appeared here, as it doesn't really look like the same location. It's funny sometimes, too, the stuff that sticks with you as these ghost hedge lions, I recall, leaving a strong impression on me back back when <laughs> Never really understood why, though, they have much poofier manes when they're animated. The Hedge Lions, too, were originally stone lions and gonna stroll out of the house with glowing red eyes, which was clearly directly inspired from the movie and maybe was changed for that reason. <sighs> Janine? Yeah, Peter. <sighs> Janine? Yeah, Peter? Think you could cool the bubbles and slow that filing to 55? My heart can't take all the excitement. Think you could cool the bubbles and slow that filing to 55? My heart can't take all the excitement. This is another prime example of lines written for Lorenzo Music's take on the character that absolutely do not work coming out of Dave, let me turn Bakeman into Bill Murray's character from Caddyshack, Coulier. I've actually had a few comments in the past saying they didn't really understand the difference between music and Coulier's Bankman's, and I have to assume that those are people that don't really get sarcasm, and if you don't get sarcasm, it makes a lot of sense to watch me. That was sarcasm. You can really hear the difference on the end of the line where music's take is dripping in sarcasm and Coulier's is said overly flat, not seeming to know why the line is funny. My heart can't take all the excitement. My heart can't take all the excitement. Guess it is kind of quiet today. Guess it is kind of quiet today. The storyboard really dunks on Winston's house of cards here, calling it lame compared to Egon's incredible house of cards. So this is an episode where the busting business is slow at the beginning, but at least Peter doesn't create a device to lure ghosts and accidentally destroy their business, since if all the ghosts come to them, they wouldn't get any calls. Where you getting the bread for all this stuff? Credit cards, my man. My ghost detractor is going to make us all very, very rich. I don't get it. Of course, that's in season four, and Peter's brain is completely rotted away by then.
That's, of course, during the era, too, where Slimer's Peter's best buddy instead of Ray's, which was a pairing that made a lot more sense. I think the problem is we're too good. I agree. We may have put ourselves right out of business. And speaking of changes in voices, you can tell that Maurice LaMarche hasn't quite settled into his regular Egon Spangler voice yet. In these very early episodes like this, Egon speaks slower than usual and sounds kind of sleepy compared to how Maurice LaMarche would normally perform the character later. There is definitely a major psychic force inside, and it's approaching the door. Mom! Well, I've seen enough. I got it, y'all got it! Sorry guys, this is my turf. Sorry guys, this is my turf. Ghostbusters! If it goes bump in the night, we'll make it right. Ghostbusters, if it goes bump in the night, we'll make it right. This is really a character at odds with themselves. Janine here is written to have a bit of an edge like the pointed glasses she wears, but it's just weird when the overly nicey nice voice tries to have an attitude opposite of the motherly nothing they turned her into. Anyway, Janine's phone banter gets slightly changed for whatever reason. Right? Uh-huh. No, really? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Wow, really? <laughs> wow, it's amazing! Hey, well, thanks! Bye! That's great! All right, well, thanks a lot! This is terrific! See ya! What is that? Well, what have we got? Casserole recipe from my sister. Casserole recipe from my sister. Oh, come on, Janine. You did that on purpose. Relax, guys, it's probably the dessert recipe. Relax, guys, it's probably the dessert recipe. I hope it's for fluffernutters. nutters. Great, Slimer's somewhere on the other side, and here we are, a bunch of fluffer nutters. What the devil's going on here? Jackpot! Jackpot! Some of the Peter lines that aren't the dry sarcasm are fine from Coulier, but just feel wrong to me since I know these early episodes pretty well. Man, it sure is great to be back in business. Where are we going? Sure is great to be back in business. Okay, where are we going? A haunted house. Oh, another haunted house. Oh, another haunted house. Yeah, isn't it terrific? Something I really like about this episode is how well it highlights Ray's super enthusiasm about the paranormal. He slimed me. That's great! Definite spectral activity inside. Fantastic! It's a live one! That depends on how you define live, Ray. Strange things have been happening around here. Really? Great. Mom! Isn't it terrific? Well, I've seen enough. Ray, the last five haunted house calls were false alarms. Ray, the last five haunted house calls were false alarms. But this sounds like the real thing. 13, 13, 13th Street. <laughs> Give me a break. This is a line that's all about the delivery. When I hear the Lorenzo Music Peters reaction, it genuinely gets a laugh out of me. When I hear Coulier's, I feel the dark reach of the abyss. Or I just don't like it that much. Give me a break. This is another line where there's nothing particularly wrong with how Coulier said it, but it's just not as funny as music's I'm so tired take. And you just know what Coulier really wanted to say. 13th Street. <laughs> Oh, got it out! Another subtle bit that I think really helps elevate this episode is the creepy shadowed shot of Mrs. Rogers watching the Ghostbusters arrive and breathing heavily. She doesn't look haunted. What a surprise. What a surprise. Talk about ugly with a capital UG. Talk about ugly with a capital UG. There are some lines like this which probably would have been okay had Kule not just overdone the doofy drooliness, like his next Peter line is said normal, so it's fine. Some strange force sabotaged it. Yeah, I think the scientific term is klutzitis. Yeah, I think the scientific term is klutzitis. I guess it's hard to sound drowning your own drool stupid while also being a smart ass. The buildup of Mrs. Rogers is pretty well done as her presence overloads the PK meter before the Ghostbusters even properly meet her. But of course, once they do, she just appears to be a regular kind old lady. Don't forget to wipe your feet, guys. Don't forget to wipe your feet, guys. But they all do do forget to wipe their feet. However, Mrs. Rogers doesn't seem to have any doormats at all, which also highlights how evil she truly is. Peter also had to wipe their lower lips in the storyboard, which really annoyed Winston and Egon. Then there was a bit of catitude from the lions that was also cut. Hey! What? 
My grandmother had a tear just like this. That's definitely a line in there that's more for adults than children. And adult humor like recognizing old furniture is something that was just too scary for kids. Also, that line isn't present on the storyboard, so it might have been in Arsenio Hall ad-lib, as they did get a few of those in during the group line recordings. Easy, ma'am. Easy, ma'am. Ray, drive Mrs. Rogers to headquarters. She can stay there while we battle the... Ray, drive Mrs. Rogers to headquarters. She can stay there while we battle the... Unspeakable horrors here. Unspeakable horrors here. The horrors like Coulier Venkman! Hey, he set me up for it. Okay, guys, check under the beds and the closets, the usual. Okay, guys, check under the beds and the closets, the usual. Peter, what are you doing? The important stuff, writing up our bill. All right, now can you do that line but without the smart alecky charm to it? The important stuff, writing up our bill. I do just really like the look Egon and Winston give each other after this. I told you guys, haunted houses were a lot of hot air. Speaking of hot air, what if you just blurted the line out and destroyed the delivery? I told you guys haunted houses were a lot of hot air. The heck was that? So the demon taking on the form of Mrs. Rogers' real name is Watt, leading to some wordplay jokes. You'll be shocked to know which Peter I thought handled this better. What? I said there are a lot of hot air. I said there are a lot of hot air. What? Who said what? Who said what? What? Did you say what? Did you say what? My favorite bit during this, though, is Winston's reaction. Say what? Say what? I didn't say what. Who did? Did what? Say what? I didn't say what. Who did? Did what? Say what? Man, I didn't say a word. Yeah, right. Then who did? Yeah, right. Then who did? A demon called what? 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 Yeah! Question. This is another line not on the storyboard, so it might have been a Lorenzo music ad lib, which makes it extra odd to have someone else redubbing it. Uh, 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 I withdraw the question! This is gonna cost extra. This is gonna cost extra. It sounds like the end of the world. Peter, are you alright? According to Tobin's spirit guide, what is a dominant force of the underworld, leader of a legion of evil demons? I'm amazed that after all of Q5's crap that ABC didn't ask Maurice Lamarche to redub that line to remove demons. What is a dominant force of the underworld? Leader of a legion of evil pee pee poo poo heads. What's goal is to invade and conquer the living world. Well, he could do it nicely. Well, he could do it nicely. You know, I kind of wonder why the key was still in the door in the first place. Here, Mrs. Rogers, just make yourself at home. Here, Mrs. Rogers. Just make yourself at home. They probably shouldn't have left that little girl trapped in Janine's body to watch Mrs. Rogers all alone. Oh, yeah. oh, Apparently, during some of the early real Ghostbusters line recordings, they had to kind of pull Frank Welker away from his gremlins voices a bit when doing Slimer, and you can definitely hear that on the cookies line here. For the cookies. Unfortunately, too, he lost this bit of Janine shaking Making her head no at Slimer about the cookies. Will Precious be safe here with the, uh, uh, um... Oh, sure. Slimer's a great bird sitter. You can tell Janine doesn't quite believe what she's saying about Slimer being a great bird sitter on the Laura Summer line, where it's just said straight on Cass Susie's. Oh, sure. Slimer's a great bird sitter. Take good care of Precious, Slimer, and don't touch those cookies. Take good care of Precious, Slimer, and don't touch those cookies. Or I'll cry. This is a pretty good use of Slimer, too, with him disliking this bird and then having the bird scare him when it reveals its true form. <coughs> this is a moment I remember thinking was creepy as a kid, too, when Mrs. Rogers turns into her demon form behind Janine and was apparently considering killing her and using her palm print to try and open the containment unit. My goodness, what is this for? This is the ecto-containment system, where all the captured ghosts are stored. This is the ecto-containment system, where all the captured ghosts are stored. Don't ask me, I'm just a girl. <laughs> That's 
why Ray and Egan just installed this fail-safe protective device. That's why Ray and Egan just installed this fail-safe protective device. I know words are coming out of my mouth, but I do not understand any of them. It only responds to the fingerprints and voice prints of the immediate staff. It only responds to the voice prints and fingerprints of the immediate staff. They apparently uninstalled this palm print safety measure after this episode as we never see it again. That was so we don't have to be on guard constantly. That was so we don't have to be on guard constantly. Even scarier on the storyboard though, dialogue in scene 115 to 127 hasn't been written yet. Apparently though, Janine was gonna turn mid Mrs. Rogers' transformation and she would change back only to fully transform when Janine turned around again. The immediate stab. My cue. Oh no. Just the four Ghostbusters. Oh no, just the four Ghostbusters. I can't be twisted with things. I'm not old enough. Shall we go? I'm right behind you, dear. Shall we go? You mean you have to go party? This scene ended completely different originally as Janine turns and screams seemingly at what? But it's a fake at as she just remembered she has no clean clothes for her date later tonight. <laughs> Knock it off, Slimer. Go back upstairs with Precious. Knock it off, Slimer. Go back upstairs with Precious. Motherly Janine being so mean to Slimer just doesn't fit. She should probably breastfeed him. Since there is the drastic design change with Janine, it's more jarring having the nicey nice voice come out of her original look. However, I do feel like Peter's expressions kind of changed to fit the new voice too, so even there it's a bit off-putting having Peter have these kind of sly expressions but sound like a doofus. Slimer, if you had any days left, they'd be numbered. Slimer, if you had any days left, they'd be numbered. Oh, cut it out. What? I asked you first. No, what is its name? What? I asked you first. No, what is its name? Ouch. Ray made a heroic entrance back into the house on the storyboard, kicking the door open. Where in the episode, the door flies open before he can kick it, so he whiffs and falls over. Oh, this is great. We've got a classic haunting here. What's this wee stuff? You're still standing. What's this wee stuff? You're still standing. Hey! <laughs> I sit corrected. This is a very Lorenzo Music Peter line, so how does Coulier do with it? I sit corrected. Eh, not his worst. Egon was originally on the floor as well in this scene, but in the final, he walks in after this part. Ugh, what is that? What? Precisely. Hey! Generally, you don't see that kind of behavior in a major appliance. You're getting closer. That's comforting. Okay, now for the humorless version. You're getting closer. That's comforting. I don't get it. I believe I've located what? Right inside this closet. Yee-haw! Oh, nice shooting, Tex. Wait, hold it. Cease fire! There's nothing in here but... Mrs. Rogers' dress. Wait, hold it! Cease fire! There's nothing in here but... Mrs. Rogers' dress. I don't believe it. Mrs. Rogers' dress is what? Say what? Ray didn't have that silly line in the storyboard, so I'm glad they added that. Janine, this is an emergency. You're in grave danger. Don't say grave! Janine, this is an emergency. You're in grave danger. There's another completely cut bit where Mrs. Rogers' dress attacks and wraps around Peter's neck, and they have a hard time getting a clean shot at it. It's a little similar to the bit later where they have a hard time trying to get Watt out of Peter's body, so it makes sense this was cut. I do like the joke that Peter's walkie-talkie is a Phony. Wish they had kept that. It's much better than Sanny. That's when everything in this haunted house starts going crazy, and Egon realizes that this was a trap meant to catch them, which is a nice twist. There's another completely cut bit with a bear rug coming to life, which seems like it was replaced with these small tables turning into ghost creatures. Will someone tell me what's going on here? Will someone tell me what's going on here? Not that I care. I hope we die. What created this house as a trap? That really? 
ticks me off. That really ticks me off. There must have been some kind of editing there on Coulier's take because it sounds like there's some kind of clunky line spacing to match the lip flaps. That really ticks me off. Hey, what are we? Ghostbusters or mice? Hey, what are we? Ghostbusters or mice? No, legit, I want to know what we are. This leads to another fairly creepy moment with the furnace ghost coming after the busters. Hey Pete, you got any ideas? Got any marshmallows? Got any bluffer nerves? Originally in the storyboard, Peter tells Ray to drop an ecto grenade at the furnace monster, which is how they take it out. But this was changed to Winston telling Ray to drop a trap in its mouth, which causes it to explode in a similar manner. A proton or ecto grenade wouldn't actually become a thing until the IDW comics. Now it does make the continuity a bit wonky that Ray uses his trap to explode the furnace monster as he somehow has his trap right after this to catch the hedge ghost lions. We have to get to Janine before Watt does. We have to get to Janine before Watt does. Janine! Janine! I hear an extra kind of confused Janine in there, so I think they added Dave Coulier into the group line, even though Lorenzo Music is in there too. Janine! Janine! Hi guys! All through with Mrs. Rogers' house? Hi guys! All through with Mrs. Rogers' house? You can tell another clunky timing edit had to be made there. All through with Mrs. Rogers' house? Yeah, but not with Mrs. Rogers. Yep, but not with Mrs. Rogers. The heck was that? Where is he? Uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, 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 I don't know. Janine shouldn't sound like a little kid getting in trouble. This is when Peter gets possessed by Wyatt and becomes Bart Simpson way before those Simpsons parody ghosts showed up on the show. And before the Simpsons was even a thing. Which is kind of hard to imagine anymore. Any sign of her yet, Peter? No, but I think I'm very close to her now. I'm glad that even while possessed by a demon, Peter is still cracking jokes. Any sign of her yet, Peter? No, but I think I'm very close to her now. Either he's coming down with a real bad cold, or we got major problems. Okay. Oh, by the way, love your new do. Okay. Oh, by the way, I love your new do. Goes well with your sickly colored skin. I am Peter Venkman. Yes. Yes, you are. I am Peter Venkman. No. No, you are not. What are you doing? Stay away. Kath Susie is a great voice actor, but the intensity of the moment is lowered a fair amount on her line read. I am the mighty what? No, I'm not. I'm Peter. Peter Venkman. I really like the struggle to hold on to himself Peter has here, and again, it's a bit flatter on the redub. No, I'm not. I'm Peter. Peter Venkman. Okay, what? Come on out. No! Peter would never withstand the blast! Say what? We should be able to pull them apart, but if we mess up, Peter may go all to pieces. Literally. Hey, maybe they did mess up here and it just took until season three for Peter to fall to pieces. What eventually makes Peter shut down the containment grid, forcing Egon and Winston to try and separate Watt from Peter's body? Peter, no! Peter, no! Janine forgot her scary glasses in the storyboard here, so this scene would have been perfect for Q5. <laughs> Janine also plays a part in saving the day as she's the one who dashes down during this and turns the containment unit back on before it's too late. Peter? Are you alright? Peter? Are you alright? But I have definitely had it with haunted houses. Right up to... up to... Up to here. Peter is supposed to be realizing his hair situation as he's saying this line, and that's not in the redubbed line at all. But I have definitely had it with haunted houses. Right up to, up to, 
up to here. And things like this probably aren't Dave Coulier's fault. It's hard to know exactly what context he was given during the redub process. And that's when Slimer gets idea. So he slimes Peter's hair down, leading to a classic Peter getting angry at Slimer moment. Come back here, Slimer. When I get my hands on you, Slimer! <laughs> Which, of course, wasn't a thing anymore when Peter had his brain removed, so it's weird to hear this coming out of the Coulier version. Come back here, Slimer! When I get my hands on you, Slimer! The thing with comparing Peters to me is, did Lorenzo music sound like Bill Murray? No. Did he sound like Peter Venkman, though? Yes. And the essence of the character was lost with Coulier doing his Caddyshack Murray impression. So, with the storyboards, that was essentially three versions of one episode, and I don't know what's what anymore. What? she's going.